you, introduce to you um, our wonderful presenter, Annette Thomas. Um, she is the founder and director of Ballet for Figure, Skate for figure Skaters. Um, she's been a dance teacher and choreographer since 1970. Her extensive dance training includes being trained at Carnegie Hall by the late Maria Nevelska, the Bolshoi Ballet. And she continued her studies with Anna Garcia of the San Juan Ballet. Annette began working with figure skaters in 1998. And um, she provided instruction in Russian Technique Ballet, which is the Vaganova method. She teaches floor bar alignment and injury prevention as part of her program. She received her pedagogical certification for the study of classical ballet, teaches online certification courses in conjunction with American Ice Theater and the Ohio Conservatory Ballet. Um, Annette is also the author of two books, um, the Fundamentals of Alignment and Classical Movement for Figure Skaters and Lessons in Classical Ballet for the Figure Skater. And so without further ado, it is Annette. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I can't see myself, but I hope you can see me. Um, I am going to have a lot of notes today. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I, Part of it, half of this is going to be lecture, and I hope half is going to be demonstration and where you can sit on the floor and work with me as I give you the exercises. So I'm going to stick closely to referring to my notes for the first half. As I was saying to uh, a couple of people beforehand, my freak out is that I don't like to leave out any information. I always have too much of it. Uh, so I need to kind of weed out what doesn't um, fit in the hour that we have together. So um, thank you for the introduction, Garrett. And I'm just wondering if I can have one little square where I can see myself so that I know where I'm positioning myself. That would be great. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. I appreciate that. So if you have notebooks, awesome and writing utensil or if you just want to take notes. Um, also, if you just want to listen, that's great because as Garrett said, all my notes will be available uh, later on. Uh, in a few days, he will send them to you. So without further ado, I will start with my notes. Uh, today, we're just going to concentrate and be working on the stabilizer muscles of the body, why they are important, uh, identifying those muscles, and then uh, we're going to be working back here on the floor and at the bar with the Vaganova uh, Level Zero ballet exercises. So um, as far as an introduction goes, uh, most of the exercises that we do today, even uh, in sports and even in ballet and dance in general, are large movements, they go fast, much faster than they should. Um, it's done choreographically, whereas uh, when you're using the stabilizer muscles, we are working with inner muscles. So we don't want the large movements today. We're not working on that. Um, also, they tend to focus on core strength. And what they mean by that, generally speaking, is the deep abs where the core has to do with all of the muscles that are close to the bones, they're close to the skeleton. So today when we exercise, uh, even when we're talking about strength training, we have a lot of large movements, a lot of choreographed movements, and a lot of fast movements. We like these kinds of classes because they release endorphins. And they make us feel great, they make us feel like we're accomplishing more. The bigger the movement, the more we're accomplishing, and that's kind of a psychological factor. Uh, but this kind of gets the cart before the horse because when we're working with safe, effective training practices, 
what we really need to be doing is working with the stabilizer muscles first to stabilize the entire body. Even as children, we need to teach them how to feel those muscles before we mobilize because this is injury preventative. You cannot safely and correctly mobilize what isn't stable, all right? So we have to work at that first. Um, so the stabilizer exercises tend to be much slower. They tend to be smaller in range and they require a lot of focus and being in the moment for mind-body connection. We live in a digital world, but our bodies and our minds are still analog and it takes a long time to be able to focus enough to put our minds in our bodies. So I tell that to my students all the time, put your mind in your body. All right, so what are the stabilizer muscles? We have three layers of muscles in the torso. We're basically talking about the shoulder girdle, which is the, um, the shoulder girdle and the trunk and the, and the hip girdle. Okay, so that's what we're going to be focusing on today. But there are three layers. There's the superficial layer, which we generally think of when we think of muscles. And then there is an intermediate layer, and then there's a deep layer, okay? So the mobilizer exercises usually focus on the superficial and the intermediate layer, whereas the stabilizer exercises focus on the intermediate and the deep layer. They're the ones that are the closest to our skeleton that hold us up and stabilize us, as it says. Okay, I'm going to try and do a screen share now so that you can see what I'm talking about. I love to give, give a visual of what's going on with my, my talking so you can picture something. Um, and I am not... I am not seeing my pictures here. All right. <clears throat> Can you see this picture that I'm showing here or not? Is that visible to you? Or not? Does anyone can anyone see that or am I not showing it correctly? I need to hear just one. Nope, person. it's not there. Oh. No, it's not there. Well, this worked when I had it with my daughter, but <laughs> for some reason I have it up here and it's not showing. Um, All right. I won't take too much longer with this, I promise, but I just want to, uh, want to try to. All right, I'm very sorry about that. I don't know why it's not working. Um, all right, I have a couple here. Let's see if I can share this one. Are you seeing these muscles? There yeah. it is. Okay, great. All right, I will share what we have here. Uh, if the rest of them don't come up, well, I will be talking about them anyway. All right, so this is the posterior view of the deep muscles. All right, we have the suboccipital muscles here. They actually attach to your eyes, all right? So where we look is actually where our body is going to turn, all right? So we have to um, work in an, our exercises in to work with our eyes as well as our spine because as, you know, like a cow or a horse, wherever it looks is what, the way it walks. And you know that when we are skating or moving, a lot of times we're looking in a different direction. So since those, um, those uh, suboccipital muscles, which are attached to the spine are working in the way that we look, the way that we're turning our heads. We need to work those muscles in order to keep our balance. And there are very specific exercises that I'm going to show you about that. All of these ex uh, muscles are very, very close to the spine. 
you're seeing the quadratus lumborum here, which attaches from the hip, the iliac crest, and it attaches to the spine and to the rib, all right? And we also have uh, many other um, multifidus, um, which are attached to the spine itself, which need to be stretched and exercised in a very, very minute and specific way. So that's one uh, example. I'm going to try and show another one. And again, I'm sorry that I'm not up on this because I was hoping <laughs> that this was going to go smoothly. <laughs> this is the first time I've done this. Hi. So, um, yes, I do apologize. All right. Um, this looks like the same one, doesn't it? Are you seeing the same one? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's the same one. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can get to stop screen sharing. All right. All right. Try this one. All right. Here we have the um, you're seeing this, right? You're seeing the superficial. This is what we normally think of. And this is the intermediate layer. So the first one that we saw was the deep layer, all right? And then there's this one. And then there is the superficial layer. So when we work choreographically and we work with uh, large movements and fast movements, these are the two layers that are getting most of the attention. Right, we know especially that kids love to go fast, and what they need <laughs> is to go a little bit slower and to really put their mind in their body. Right, okay. Um, I am not going to take any more time with this again. I'm sorry that this isn't working as I thought it was going to work, um, but that's technology for you. Right, I <laughs> hopefully. Uh, at some point, I'll get better at this. Right. Sure. I'm going to, oh, let's see if I can do this one. This is from my book. All right. Is everyone seeing this? This is really important. Yeah, I got that one. Excellent. Yeah. I'm so glad. You're, thank you for your patience, everyone. <laughs> All right. So these, uh, see, we're seeing the pectorals on this side and the deltoids and the trapezius. And this is all of the muscles that we're normally uh, hearing about, right? When we're working, even when we're in strength training, we're not looking at the pectoralis minor, all right? Or the intercostals, the, those are the muscles in between the um, ribs, all right? We can actually work those muscles so that we are stronger inside. And you see these muscles here, which are coming out the serratus anterior and the muscles that are coming from the ribs and attaching into the shoulders, okay? So pectoralis minor is actually attaching from the torso into the shoulder. And this is why teaching arm movements as mostly choreographic is not the best way to start because we need to understand how these muscles attach as teachers, all right? This is, I'm talking to the coaches and the adults. Um, we need to understand how they attach so that they are, your arms are truly an assist to your jumps and your spin. So the way we train the arms has everything to do with how we are going to be able to move better right how our technique is going to become better and stronger all right back to you guys okay so identifying the stabilizer muscles all right um the stabilizer muscles are the intermediate and the deep layer okay the stabilizers hold us together while the mobilizers move us it's exactly what it sounds like all right so we want us uh, to have, um, where am I? Okay, so maintaining deep quality edges while moving the body through various planes of movement 
that requires strong um, muscles that are close to the body, right? Those deep muscles, all right? So when we talk about strengthening the stabilizer muscles, we are just going to picture this as we go through those exercises on the floor, all right? So the stabilizer muscles also restrict movement of the joints so that the joints don't get injured. So if you're doing a lot of stretching and the joints are not solid and protected in and of themselves because they have been trained correctly, you can just have loose joints, which is not the same as usable flexibility, all right? And you can cause injuries by doing that. So a lot of stretching without strengthening in exactly those same areas can cause, actually cause injuries, all right? So a few ways you can detect strong mobilizers and weak stabilizers is you can do a high kick. You've seen everyone do a high kick and the torso collapse, right? The torso collapses and the standing knee bends. All right, so this is showing that they are not completely balanced in their technique and their understanding of the use of the body. All right, they can hold a pose beautifully, but they have difficulty transitioning to a different plane of movement. All right, they tend to wobble. All right, this is another indicator. All right, they have great stretch and flexibility, but they can't hold a landing. All right, this is another indication. You've been working mobilizers too much and stabilizers not as much as we should. Um, also, the torso and shoulders collapse on a jump landing instead of lifting the way it should. That takes those muscles that are very, very close to the spine to be able to go up when we do a plie. So instead of doing just a plie that goes down and up, we need a plie that does this, all right? So that eccentric contraction is the one that takes it away from the center of the body and holds the spine in place, all right? So you can see where it's not just an artistic thing, but it is also an injury preventative thing, all right? So why is it important, just as a recap, to develop and understand what the stabilizer muscles do. You can't successfully without injury mobilize what isn't stable, all right? Loose joints and usable, safe, controlled, multiplanar flexibility are two entirely different things, all right? We want to uh, have our skaters become aware of and train these muscles first they will, it will create a smarter, more aware, injury-free skater, all right? And the best thing is, in my opinion, not that these things aren't great, is that your skater won't ever have to go back to square one because they train too fast and now they need to fix things, all right, which were initially overlooked. So when people tell me, oh, your muscles, your, your exercises are so slow, et cetera, et cetera, my, my other student is, you know, uh, in level six or whatever, you know, random level they're in in ballet. And I say, my student will go faster in the long run, all right? Because your student doing what she's doing in that ballet class or that exercise class is going to have to go back and fix things. So um, it, it feels slow in the beginning, but in the long run, it's just as fast and uh, it's, it feels better too. I've taught so many um, professional ballet dancers and I give them the basics and they love it. They feel all of those muscles and it just feels so good to move from completely the inside out I'm not saying that choreography isn't fun. It is great fun. I mean, that's why we do it. But these exercises will make you feel alive in an entirely different way. And it can focus students um, that tend to have uh, ADHD issues because they can count, they can process, and they can think about putting their mind in their bodies. Okay? All right.
So very quickly, I'm just going to go through this and then we're going to get to the exercises because I'm looking at my time. <laughs> All right, so I am aware of the time. All right, so you're gonna think of this kinetic chain of three stabilizer complexes, like a big capital letter I, the shoulder girdle, the trunk, and the hip girdle, okay? So those are the three uh, chains thinking about. So hip stabilized complex has, I'm just gonna name a few muscles, gluteus maximus, medius and minimus, the piriformis and the other five deep rotators. Gluteus medius is the most important one. And this is why when we do a plie that is just choreographed down and up and let's go again and listen to the music and I'll get all soft and wonderful. I tend to be a little sarcastic, just to ignore that. Um, <laughs> we're, we're not doing anything for gluteus medius. We're not doing anything to really help our jumps. And I'm going to show you later uh, how a real plie is supposed to go. Okay? And as I say to my students, you should be sweating bullets after about four plies. Okay, so then um, when the hips are off, everything is off. So that stabilizing complex needs to be taken care of right from the beginning. All right, part of the kinetic chain that goes from the hip to the trunk is the six deep rotators then the iliopsoas, all right, which we've all heard of. But um, I, during, in my notes, at the bottom of my notes, I've got the URL for these uh, pictures, okay? So you, afterwards, you can just take that and look at what I'm talking about, okay? So then the quadratus lumborum, very, very important. It balances the lumbar, lumbar sacral joint, all right? So uh, it's attached to the ribs and the vertebrae, so it keeps the hips and the, and the, uh, the trunk balanced with each other, all right? And then we have the trunk stabilizer, which is the multifidus. We saw that right next to the spine, all right? It's holding like the erector spiny also, holding up the spine, transverse abdom abdominals, things that are moving this way and holding that position. Maybe holding this, but the legs are moving in an entirely different direction. Okay, that's that multi-planar view. All right, at the obliques and the diaphragm. We forget how important the diaphragm is. It is actually a stabilizing muscle. It's not just about the breathing. It attaches from the xiphoid process, which is right at the end of your sternum, all right, to the 11th and 12th vertebrae and uh, the lumbar vertebrae and your ribs, all of those things that attaches to. Now, if that is weak, how many of you teach breathing, correct breathing, right? That's really important because it's part of the stabilizer complex. Breathing isn't just about yoga and feeling good. It does do that, but it's also about the stabilizer complex. Then we have the shoulder stabilizer complex. Remember, you saw how it attaches right to your ribs and the trapezius and all of these muscles are holding everything up. So to stretch, just to use the arms kind of loosely out here and randomly, isn't going to hold, make that lift, that strong connection, where again, you're having an eccentric contraction, stretching this way, both ways, like somebody's pulling you in opposite directions. Chin is up, head is lifted, and you're lifting the torso. This way, you're feeling more than just the deltoids. It's good to feel the deltoids, but you've got to feel those inner muscles to be able to jump, to be able to bring that in for a good strong spin. And those are the muscles that we need to be visualizing as teachers, as coaches, when we talk. I like to uh, make believe superpowers. I have x-ray vision. And when I look at my student, I do see the person. Okay, I, yes, I am a dance nerd, it's obvious, but I do see the person, I enjoy being with the person, but x-ray vision, I wanna see what their skeleton and their deep muscles are doing. And that is position I take as a teacher to make sure that they're in order before we do any large movements. Okay, so the uh, shoulder step, the shoulder sta stabilizers and the sub 
occipitals, okay? We were talking about how the eyes, if you take your fingers, just briefly, if you take your fingers and push them on either side of your spine, right at the base of your skull, and you close your eyes and you look sharply from right to left, you're gonna feel your muscles moving, right? Okay, so when we skate and we look <laughs> and we go over this way or we, we're in a car and we see something pretty and we turn, right? That happens because it's like the reins, okay? So when we start our, our exercises, even with the little ones, we move one leg and look the other way. And this helps them to feel a balance looking towards and away the leg that's being lifted. Right, so it's very, very important to do that in carriage of the arms and in your proprioception. We talk a lot about that in our feet, but it also has to do with our eyes and our spine. Okay, all right, so the large and single directional movement will not give stability to any joint. All right, it's only by using multi directional isometric and eccentric uh, exercises for the deep and mid uh, layers that's really going to help us. All right, that's also why we need to balance stretches and strengthen in the same class. Try not to send your kids to an all stretch class that doesn't include strengthening those exact same muscles that they stretched, okay? Um, again, just to reiterate, Stabilizer exercises are usually small and require focus and concentration. Not really what we're used to unless we're used to doing figures, right? Okay, because that's where we got off, I think. I'm, I'm obviously that old to know that <laughs> figures are, were very, very important for the stabilizer muscles. Okay? And, and moves in the field just doesn't do it. It's not the same feeling at all. So. Uh, this is how the Vaganova method of classical ballet begins their level zero. There are over 35 floor exercises that work on the stabilizer muscles. When the child is between five and nine years old, they have gone through all of these exercises so that by the time they get to level one, they look better than anybody else's level five. There's a reason why. It's because they've worked with the stabilizer muscles and they've worked with them every day, okay? So these are some of the things that we're gonna work on. Uh, if you can get to a place on your floor, all right, that you can just sit down and work, uh, that would be great. If you've got a chair for later on, uh, we're gonna be doing a few things at the bar just so you can feel these muscles and feel these things that uh, I'm talking about, okay? So I'll give you a moment to do that and then we will continue. All right, I'm gonna make my screen larger. And again, I apologize about the technical problems. I'm not that great at that, obviously. <laughs> so, all right. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to tilt this down a little bit more and we're going to um, work with the myofascia first, okay? So um, what I want you to do is the myofascia, now we're talking about stabilizer muscles, but the myofascia covers all of your muscles, all right? And there are sheets of them, all right? There's, there's uh, sheets that go in the front, the back, that wrap our bodies. We are just swaddled with myofascia and what it does is it holds the material, our, our muscles together, and it also feeds inflammation and blood and all of that. So if you've ever cut a steak and you see that film, that's what myofascia is. And there's, there are two lines that we're going to work the myofascial trains. One goes from the tips of the toes all the way back, the lower back, and attaches at the top of the eyeballs. So if you've got a neck ache, your lower back is bothering you, it feels tight, tight hamstrings, this is going to help. So I want you all to get into a straddle. Pardon me, I don't straddle anymore. I have arthritis in one hand. But <laughs> anyway, we're gonna straddle, we're gonna sit up as tall as we can, pull the kneecaps up and flex, and we can just 
going to go as far forward as feels comfortable, just until it gets a little bit ouchy, all right? I don't want you to stretch hard, all right? Just to feel it. Notice where your the angle of your legs and the angle of your body to the floor and for the straight back. Okay, take note of that. All right, now we're going to take the right foot and the right, the right foot and the left fist. You're going to use your knuckles, all right? The tips of the knuckles, not the flat. And you're going to dig in and really dig in. When you do this on your own, you can use some lotion, all right? It helps. But the harder you dig, the more you're going to feel that it's going to connect all the way to the top. So you're doing a rotating movement and you're digging in. I know I have one foot that's really tickly and the other one isn't. <laughs> all the way to the ball of the foot, to the outside um, arch, to the heel, to the inside arch, and all the way down the middle. Then we're going to pull the toes back all right, pull them back as far as they'll go. Crunch them. This is not a point. This is a crunch. All right. Then you're going to spread the toes all by themselves, not with your fingers yet. Spread them like you would spread your fingers. Then spread them with your fingers so that you're really, really stretching all the toes apart. Then you're going to take your fingers, take them to the outside of the foot and bring them around to the inside. The thumb is on the inside and you're gonna fold your foot in half. Fold it, feel a nice squeeze going all the way up and down to the heel and back up to the toe and then stretch. All right, sit up nice and straight. And if you feel a little ouchy here, take those knuckles again and rub sideways across the backs of the knees. Dig in a little bit up to the hamstrings, all right? And then go back down into that straddle position and just really feel that one side, all right? Just really take note of it, putting your mind in your body. Feel softer, right? It just feels softer. And you haven't forced your body, you haven't made it stretch, right? It just did it on its own because you were kind to it and did what it really needed, all right? So we're gonna try the other foot and you're gonna take your knuckles and dig in hard, twisting, going from the ball of the foot all the way across to the outside arch, heel of the foot, inside arch, and straight down the middle, make sure you get it all. All right, and then you're bending your toes back. Good. Then you're crunching the toes forward. Again, that's not a point, it's just a crunch. All right. Then you're going to spread the toes out by yourself and then spread them with your fingers. We use our fingers a lot, but you know, we need to use our toes, even in our skating group. And then we're going to take the fingers, the tips of the fingers on the outside and the thumb on the inside and squeeze all the way up and down. Take your time. I think this is a good feel, this squeeze. This is good on the feet. And I tell my students, do this before every class and before you put your skates on, all right? Again, with the knuckles, you're feeling a little ouchy under here. Scrub back and forth, sideways, going down to the insertion. And now let's see how loose we are. Okay, pretty good, huh? Pretty good for having, I call it the warm up before the warm up. You haven't even done anything besides these massages, all right? So now we're going to do pointing of the feet. You're going to pull your kneecaps up. You're going to sit up nice and tall and just look to see how far your feet point. Okay, so you're pointing as a plantar flexion, right? And then lengthening the toes, okay? All right, so same movement. Let's get the right leg going. We're doing the top, two knuckles, right? Two hands, two knuckles, and go down across the, the ankle and up with as much force. Now, this can be kind of painful. 
So I'm just gonna go, I know. Um, just go, go as uh, hard as you can without hurting yourself, your knuckles or your legs, okay? But when you do it on your own, make sure that you really go as hard as you can, use lotion, and you're gonna do that eight to 10 times. As hard on the way down as, as you go up, all right? Cross over the kneecap and cross over the joint, the ankle joint. Now we're going to use this motion. Yep, and we're gonna squeeze again, squeeze. You're gonna feel a little relaxed, I think, when you just leave your foot nicely on the floor, don't press it or anything. And you feel a little, ah, your, your muscle feels like it's relaxing, at least mine does. Tibialis anterior and the uh, peroneal muscles, all right? And come on back up, squeezing, squeezing, and cross over. And now you're going to take the right hand like a stop and push the Achilles tendon, all right? Right here, you're cupping the Achilles tendon and the left hand is going this way, all right? And you're pulling. Now watch the line of my foot. Don't do this because then that's sickling, all right? And you don't want to do that. So keep the foot closer to the floor and just pull with the left, push with the right. Give it a little shake so that you feel that nice stretch all the way up the shin, all right? Give it a little shake, keep pushing and pulling, and then go back to the point, and I think you'll see there's a difference, right? So you don't need to force your feet to do things. You know how, you have to learn what your body needs, and a lot of times it'll do it all on its own if you know how to treat it. All right, okay, let's do the other one. Knuckles and down and up, eight to 10 times. Going as hard on the way up as on the way down. You're going to the kneecap and across the ankle joint. You're working to the LS anterior and your peroneals on the outside. Right, good job, yep, all the way up and down. Not short movements, but a good deep slide, all right? All the way up and all the way down. And again, later on, you can use lotion, okay? All the way up and down. And again, the harder you go, the more you're going to see a difference. And now this movement, like this, and we're going to squeeze. Give it a little shake, let it go. Ah, I feel that. Right, all the way slowly, take your time slowly. Everybody's in a rush, right? <laughs> and shake and bring it all the way back, all the way back to the kneecap, right? Good job, good job. And cross it over. And now we're taking the left hand and doing that stop right on the Achilles tendon, cupping the Achilles tendon. The, the right hand is going this way and make sure it doesn't do this, all right? Make sure you've got a straight line. You're pulling hard with the right and you're pushing hard with the left. Good job, keep going, give it a little shake till you feel a nice stretch all the way up. And then take the foot down. You're always gonna have a better point on one than the other. That's life, right? But you can feel that it feels much looser and you have a better point. You didn't have to shove it under the couch. You didn't have to do, get a device, all right? You can do it all on your own. All right, now we're going to start with um, the trunk and hip stabilizer complexes seated on the floor, okay? So I'm gonna go sideways to you. And what I do with my students, I either use a yardstick or I put my foot here and my lower leg here. And I have them sit up and feel the ears. I have to come around to each one. Ears in line with the shoulders, usually they're a little bit here, or the arms are back. And we're talking about the coronal plane here, right? This is the coronal plane and the sagittal plane is this way, all right? So think about those. This is your 90 degree angle, all right, that we're talking about in the Vaganova method Strengthening and stretching the 90 degree angle to perfection, as good as one person can do, in every direction, 
is their goal and they don't go any higher until that goal is achieved, all right? And that is the secret to what makes them so good. So we're sitting up nice and tall, elbows in line with the body, knees pulled up, not locked, all right? When you lock the knees, you are going to damage, this is locking, with the kneecaps pulled down and just locking them back. This is very, very bad for the student. You need to pull the kneecaps up and make sure that everything is protected, all right? So pulling up the knees, pointing the feet, and slumping down so that they feel what that bad position is, right? And then using this or your foot, you're building, don't arch, build, build. Think about all of those multifidus muscles, all of those muscles that we were talking about. And, and ears, and then we take it down to the floor, hands down to the floor. Now I'm going to show it to you this way. And open, stretching, getting taller. You're feeling this, you're feeling arrows coming this way. You're feeling in and up on the sagittal plane and in and up on the coronal plane. And your hands are just here on the floor first, the fingertips on the floor, and you're feeling that for 12 counts, all right? Not just for a second, but you're pulling up, right? Pulling up, in and up, in and up, 12 counts. Then we come to second, we haven't taught second yet, but you can stretch and feel that stretch in either direction, and the chin is up, and the head is up, and the ears are parallel to shoulders, and then the levulator scapula, right? Keeping it down, right? That is, you can't just tell your student, don't hunch, all right? You have to press it down, and you have to remember the feeling, and it takes time. And keep it down as you go into third or high fifth if it's chiquetti, all right? And coming back out sinking, right? Stay up and here. And then you would repeat that at least four times with your student. Slumping down, building it up again to get the feeling, holding it here, here, here. It looks boring, right? But when you're thinking of the 400 muscles or more, it, it really um, it is not great, okay? All right, we're going to go to the next exercise. Um, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about turnout, okay? So the way I teach turnout, I'm not going to do this right now, but I, I have them tie their, their feet together, and then we lift up. Tighten. I know I've only got 15 minutes left. If I had two hours, we would all do this. <laughs> all, right. all right. But you would lift up. Remember about the gluteus medius maximus minimus underneath. We would lift up and we would turn out only from the gluteals. All right. Only. And we would try to get the pinky toes on the floor and we would pull up the kneecaps again. So from this position, right, is what I'm looking for. Two lumps on the knees will prove that they are pulled up, mountains here, and always in and up. Because a lot of times what happens is this, right? So you need to tell your students it is in and up all the time. That's an isometric exercise and an eccentric exercise, right? Not the concentric ones. We do a lot of those, which bunches up muscles, right? It's more like Pilates. Okay, so after you were to sink and come up, you would tell them, turn out, all right? And you would lift without going back, all right? So it's a tiny lift, and they're gonna wanna do this for you because they wanna show you how high they can lift up. It could be only two inches. But this is what we're trying to strengthen. One, flex, looking in the opposite direction, looking and bring it down, look away, look towards, 
right? And you would do that four times. And then you would take it up here later on when they are able to do it and keep their back from hunching, right? Remember that when you kick high and your body collapses, right? You're trying to fix that. All right, another turnout exercise. We're going to be in this position again, this 90 degree angle, thinking lifting and lifting, all right? And squeezing in. All right, so I want you to visualize. Ballet, classical ballet is based on the golden mean, all right? It's based on geometry in motion, all right? So I want you to be able to visualize that geometry in your own body. So you would bring the heel off the floor as you bend the knee because that uh, connects your piriformis and all your deep, um, the deep uh, rotators, okay? If you keep the heel on the floor, you'll feel it. Nothing is happening up here, all right? This makes that happen. Up to the middle of the calf, slowly, 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 so that you feel everything and the back stays lifted. And then you bring it in. And as soon as you bring it in, boom, right? Okay, so you have to feel up, up, always pushing up, take it back down, and then slowly again, because what happens if you go fast is you bring it down like this. You want to keep this here and bring it down slowly, slowly. Then you would do it with the other four counts, four counts, lift. As soon as you feel that heat, stretch the lower back up, quadratus lumborum, here, and slowly coming it back. Then you would do both very, very slowly, slowly keeping the back lifted, lower back, and up, squeeze the ankle, the knees together, and then take the hands here, put your head down on your knees and keep your head on your knees as you straighten your legs. And there's your stretch. And come up. And then the last part of this particular exercise, I'm gonna to go to the side again. This is all working that 90 degree angle. I call it the magic angle. All right, this is your combre. All right. It's not hunched. And also, this is not a show of what a good um, turnout is or what real flexibility is that is aligned, all right? You see a lot of kids bringing the feet in. I always do it in flex, have the knees pulled up and the arms are in stick up position and you feel that stretch and you always lift on count one, lift, one, count one is always straight up, looking to the side and flat back. Two, three, four on the way up, you lift again, up, five and six and seven and eight, and then you would do the other side. So you always think about complete alignment. Knees and toes up to the ceiling, lift on one, looking here, two, three, four, come up, Lift on five, six, seven, eight. Lift on one, two, three, four. Lift on five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we're still working on that 90 degree stretching and strengthening in equal measure. All right. Okay. Now we're going to go for another turnout exercise that's going to be on the stomach. And then um, I'm going to quickly just show you some carriage of the arms on the floor. I want to get to plie, so I'm going to go very quickly with these, all right? So you're on your stomach, your toes are curled under you, your head is down, your knees are on the floor, and you stretch out, but in and up, all right? So the knees stay together, and you hold that for four very slow counts. That's less, that's less than 60 beats per minute as a slow count. Then you turn from the gluteals only, heels down, and then point and bring it back, and you repeat. That should take a good 16 counts. You've got four counts here, 
four counts, bringing the heels together, only using the glute heels, do not put any pressure on the knees, four counts and four counts. Then coming, I'm gonna show it to you from this way, all right? Then you can keep the hands here, or you can do here if they're very advanced, but you need to try here first. Keeping the hip bone on the floor, this is stretching to the back, all right? Not like this. That doesn't do anything, okay? Hip bone on the floor and hold it. Eight counts, hold and lower. Eight counts, hold and lower and then go and hold. Keeping the shoulder girdle loose and long, but the deep abs and the hips are very well engaged. Okay. All right, I am going to show you a little port de bras on the floor. This is in my book, my alignment book. I only have one lemon and one, one lime. This is for uh, finger groupings, just to kind of help you with that. But what I'm gonna show you now is port de bras, carriage of the arms on the floor. Normally in a ballet class, your carriage of the arms and the whole upper body is moving and it's lovely but it's really not doing anything for your stabilizer muscles. So we do this on the floor first. So you're on the floor and you're taking your arms out to what would be second position and you feel your lower back pushing into the floor, not to curl your tailbone, but just the deep abs to the spine, in and up, just as you would do in Pilates. Feel the shoulder blades and the shoulder joints on the floor. Every time we do an exercise with the legs, this happens. We're not going to allow that to happen here, all right? So keeping the shoulder joints on the floor, bring them down to brava or preparatory as we call it. You don't have to be in turnout, just point your feet. And then first position, Open it up and out, back to the second, just the elbows on the floor. Take it down to Brava again. You feel that it will feel a little strange and you're gonna go very, very slowly. I'm going faster because we're running out of time, but each position should be at least four counts and up without arching the back. All right, keeping this long and strong, down and away from the center, right? Taking it back out and hold, and you can drop them and feel that stretch. Feel the stretch. It's hard to do this without bringing the shoulder, shoulder uh, joints off the floor, all right? But this is the way we start bringing awareness, body awareness, and strength to those muscles. All right, I definitely want to get to the plies, okay, because they're so crucial. So we're going to do one exercise more, and then I will open it up for questions, okay? All right, so can everybody see me? You don't really need to see my head, just my body. <laughs> okay, I hope you can see me. Yes. Okay, good, thank you, thank you. All right, so in a normal plie, when we get into ballet class, that normally what happens is you have one hand on the bar and everything is moving and we're doing this plie and we go down two counts and we come up and it's really nothing, okay? Nothing is happening. We always start with two hands on the bar because just as the floor is our template for our movement, now the bar becomes our template and we put two hands on the bar so that we are flush with the bar, okay? Just as we are flush with the floor. And we start with first position. First position is lifting the toes, turning out from the gluteals, dropping the toes, and squeezing in and up, 
We feel the big toe, the little toe, and the heel on the floor, and we see the tibialis, uh, tibial tendon in front so that the arch is lifted. When we go down in demi-plie, demi-plie is your, um, is where you want to work for higher jumps, not grand plie. So you're going down one, slowly, two and three and four, feeling the little toes on the floor and lifting the arches, all right? Big toe, little toe and heel equally on the floor and the body is lifted. So you're getting taller, you feel like you're getting taller as you go down. You deepen on count five or count and, and then you push. This is an isometric pushing five, squeeze, so split six, seven, eight, slowly, slowly squeezing in and up so that the heels are together, the knees are together, and then you would go up into a releve, tightening the gluteals, slowly holding that, do not arch the back, slowly. So the whole thing would be 16 counts. I'm just going to do this one more time. Demi plie, you're going down and out, knees over toes, tailbone is straight down, it's not tucked, and everything from the iliac crest up is going up. Right, the center of your body is about two inches below your iliac crest, if you were to put your fingers this way. So you've got one getting taller, opening that shoulder girdle, chin up, three, four, and push. Keeping the knees out on the way up is almost more important than keeping them on the way down. Five, six, squeeze in and up. Seven and eight, releve. One, two, three, four, hold. Five, six, lower, seven and eight. Okay. I'm afraid that's all we have time for. But um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. This is a daily thing. We can do this daily. Absolutely, yes. How much, how much time do you, do you think the whole run through usually take you? Like an hour? For the exercises I just did yeah. today, yeah, you would probably take a good hour to, to begin with. 45 minutes to an hour, really getting them focused. Okay. That's excellent. Any, anyone? Um, if I have, like, we have lacrosse balls instead of knuckles, is this acceptable or a hard roller, or do you like the hands better? I like the hands better because we need to get in touch with our bodies. We use so many instruments that it drives me crazy. It's like, get in touch with your body. Wash your hands later, that's fine, but you need to feel it. You need to feel how you're feeling that day. So, Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, anyone else? Don't be shy, I love questions. <laughs> I have something in the chat here. I'm not sure if I should look at that. Oh, that, no, I am assuming that meant no picture, right? Yeah. And again, I really apologize. Those pictures were fun, but you will get notes and you will be able to see them. Okay. So, yeah. Do you have any advice for trying to get um, your leg higher um, when it's out to the side or front or back? Um, what I was going to do, and I can do this very briefly, um, again, my time got away from me a bit. Um, when we do relevé long and tendu, we start with the hands here, so your, your back is to the bar, and you just do tendu, and you're going to go slowly with that back totally straight. You can even put the back on the wall. And you're just holding it there. And the thing is, is even now I can see, and this isn't to pick on you, but your hip is forward, right? The hip that you're taking up, slightly forward, and you move your hip this way. So when we do it, we think of down and up. And that hip has to stay completely parallel to the bar and not be lifted, okay? 
So once a student can do this at 45 to each side, and when we do it here, we're not going to be doing this. The problem is that every time we teach fast, everything gets screwed up because we're not taking the time. So you need to not counterbalance, keep the leg out to the side, rotate, and hold it at lower positions. All right, this is what people like, but rotating and holding that position for like at least four, if not eight counts, we'll do it and to the same to the back. Don't arch your back, right? Stay up, you're always lifting, and just lift that leg. The gluteals need to be tight, the knees need to be straight. All of those things will, will work in the end, all right? Not just taking the leg and doing that. Right? Because, you know, when you can hold your skate up there and then you drop it and it goes like a rock, it's like, well, well sorry, but I wasn't impressed, right? <laughs> so that's why I do have a video. It does have exercises with skates on, all right, uh, that you can use. Uh, it's on my website. And I think it's obviously it's got to be the best weight, right? Because it's your own skate. So you might want to look into that too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Even if you think the question isn't worth asking, ask it anyway. Somebody else might benefit from it, right? <laughs> Okay, well, Garrett. Oh, I have one. I have one. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you notice um, a large discrepancy on one side or the other? Do, do you put more work into the side that you see, um, like less stabilization or less turnout or less control on? Mm-hmm. question. And to start with, um, my answer is no, I don't. But if I have, if I have that person as a continuing student, yes, I do. If it's in a regular class situation, I might bring them forward after class. Uh, we don't embarrass them or, yeah. and talk to the parent and make sure that maybe they do a couple more at home on that other side. But no, I would so. make sure that they're doing it correctly. Because a lot of times when there is a huge difference, they're compensating. All right, so that the, the good side needs to still relearn stuff because the good side has been taking over for the bad side. Right. right. Okay. okay, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, Annette, okay. so much. I, I cannot recommend enough Annette's materials and all that she has to offer. Um, I have her video and I um, got it a few years ago, four or five years ago, and took it with me on the road when I was touring and um, just so, so helpful and strengthening and injury preventative, 100%. Um, so I encourage you all to have access, get access to that video she created and her books and classes and thank you for giving us a taste today and that with with your wonderful workshop oh she's frozen are you there oh you're welcome i was happy to do it. thank you again i do have um i do have many courses they're only three days long you can check those out too i'm not doing any more of the coaches 16 week certification year but i'm always open to the shorter ones you can even make up your own so that you know you're learning exactly what you want to learn in your three times with me well thank you very much oh you're welcome it was a pleasure my pleasure Thank you all. We'll have, um, like I mentioned at the beginning, we'll have an email out a couple days with um, the notes that Annette sent and a, rec a recording of our session and um, any more information. If you want to contact Annette, we'll send along her info as well. So thank you all. Our next session, August 29th, um, we will have one more summer workshop series. I um, hope to see you all there. <laughs>